Hello, I have just completed a recording for Pianist magazine of Manuel de Falla's Danza Ritual del Fuego, or Fire Ritual Dance. This piece, which is quite virtuosic, it appears in issue 134 of the magazine and is one of the advanced pieces. Because of its complexity and slight quirks, I thought it might be interesting to share some of my performance tips with some of you in a way that it might help you perform this piece with a little bit more fluidity and ease. One important thing to remember when performing this is that it is not an original piece written for the piano, but a transcription that Manuel de Falla himself wrote. There is a whole programmatic story that goes together with this ballet, and I encourage you to find more about it by reading the article that is also featured in issue 134 of the magazine. Let's have a look at a few tips and ideas that might help you with this piece. One of the more challenging things right at the start of the piece is, is, is the very long and sustained trill that appears. Uh, De Falla um, wrote, as I said, this, wrote this piece for uh, the orchestra and it's quite easy for the string ensemble to sustain that uh, trill and to be able to do a very effective crescendo through it. On the piano it might be a little bit harder, so there is a sly way that might help you to create that bigger sense of crescendo. I would encourage you to start uh, the, pi the, the trill with two hands. So there is an acciacatura that is performed just before the start of the trill, and I normally take that with the left hand. It's quite a dramatic entrance as well. It's quite hard, you can do it with a single hand, but I think the, the two-handed um, start gives it a bit more of a, a, bit more of a dramatic start. Uh, then you must start the trill, and an important thing with all trills, and particularly very fast ones like these ones, is to keep your fingers as close as you can to the keys. That will help you to create a fast sounding trill. So don't try to elevate your fingers too much, as it might be quite difficult to create a sensation of speed. If I finger is one and three quite useful in here, then they allow me to do the, the little semiquavers uh, or chiacaturas that follow that. Uh, another important trick or another little device that you can use to help you with the crescendo is to take over with the left hand um, and help you out with the volume of the trill halfway through it. So you start uh, with a single trill quietly on the right hand and then as the, as the crescendo goes on, uh, introduce the left hand and then take it away. Something like this. Quite a good trick. You can use it for lots of other uh, pieces, but I find it quite effective in here. The left hand uh, has quite a few jumps and difficult moments. I would say that practice very carefully the moments when you have the open tenths. We want a nice and clear staccato in the lower part and the minims in the top part, in the tenor register, uh, it's, it's nice to be able to hold it just for a little bit longer to create uh, an illusion of two voices. If you were to play with the two hands, and then try to imitate that amount of staccato in the top part uh, with the left hand as well. Another difficult moment later on is this passage of descending semiquavers. I was suggesting that you watch out for your thumb position. So once that you complete, once that you complete your first round of four semiquavers, make sure that your hand falls very quickly and your little finger replaces the thumb quite quickly. So. Another difficult moment comes when the melody is played in octaves, or at least the beginning of the melody is played in octaves, and is very quickly followed by a triplet. Uh, once again, in order to be able to play this passage effectively, 
It's all to do with the way that you position your thumb. Once that the thumb plays the lower part of the octave, move it quite quickly out of the way and be ready to play the rest of the triplet. If I do it in slow motion, One thing that you can do is to be a little bit creative with your pedaling. In the section with the repeated chords, I always like to keep my pedal for just a little bit longer and be brave and adventurous with it when we play in the minor version of the accompaniment. So. And then you can get away if you are very careful with one single pedal line through all of that. Listen to it. and change right there on the last E flat. I think it makes for a very interesting moment. One special effect that you can have on the coda is to apply a glissando in the last run of semiquavers. Lots of pianists do it and I think it's quite an effective and I have stolen that idea too. So instead of, it's quite interesting and quite exciting to do and land on that uh, E chord. So. Play the left hand and then glissando and land on that E minor chord. It makes for a really thrilling and exciting ending to the performance. I hope that those tips were useful and if you want to learn more about the piece, purchase issue 134 of Pianist magazine where you can read the articles on this piece and many other performances.